All right guys, so it is the beginning of November and winter has kind of snuck up on me and I'm preparing to do some winter camping in the rooftop tent. But as you can see, it's off the truck right now. I haven't been running it for the past week. I've actually built a cool little crane system to remove this by myself. I'm gonna share with you guys in an upcoming video, but I had the tent off and I figured I could kind of prep myself for this winter and, and kind of figure out exactly my game plan to heat it up. And I've got some cool new stuff I'm gonna share with you on today's video. And it's a diesel heater for heating up these tents. And this thing is absolutely insane. I was gonna build one of these this winter with you guys here on the channel. And when I started looking into building them, I ran across this bad boy and I don't even have to build one now. It's, it's kind of all compact into itself. And I wanted to show you guys how I'm gonna power everything. So if you follow me, you know, for the past, I guess, couple of years, uh, you know, my truck camper build when we had the, the rooftop tent on top of the camper shell on the back of the Tacoma, I was powering everything with this Pecron 600. And this thing's a beast. It does really good. It's got wireless charging on the top and all of that. But recently, Pecron has come out with a bigger one. And this bad boy right here is a 2000 watt electric generator. So this thing has got a LifePo 4 battery in it and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six AC ports on the front, four USB ports, two USB-C ports, a, a couple of DC ports over there, and you can actually hook up external batteries. They sell expansion packs for this thing, so you can run your house off of this, and I mean, it's, it's heavy duty. It's still got the wireless charging on the top, but it's not too bad. They got these really nice handles on the inside that you, know, you don't have to flip anything up. It's kind of molded in, but this is what we're gonna use to power the heater. Now my plan is, if you know my truck, I've got the diamond back that sits up under my tent and it kind of gives me an area to set gear and strap boxes, I think. Uh, last trip I had this uh, Apache box from Harbor Freight kind of uh, strapped down to the top of the diamond back under the tent and we were able to haul a bunch of extra gear just in that alone. So it gives me like a little table area or platform up under the tent to, to maybe set up a heater area because I really don't want to set anything inside the tent. And you know, if I put this in here and then I put that big heater in there, it's going to take up a lot of room. And I like to have as little room as possible, you know, little stuff in there as possible. So we got room to actually sleep and watch TV or, or whatever. So I want to use the diamond back to set this stuff up, run the heater up. I've got some ducting stuff that we're going to use that I'm going to hook up to this thing and run it up. But first, we're going to test everything out on the inside of my garage while I've got the tent off. It's actually easier for me to film it this way for you guys. So I'm gonna run the heater in today's video and we're gonna run it off of this Pecron 2000. I think this is the E, let me look it up. I don't wanna lie to you guys. And I think I've also got promo codes for the heater and this that I will share with you guys. So this is called the E2000 LFP. It's a 2000 watt power and it's got a peak power of 4,000 watts. So this thing is huge. The capacity is 1,920 watt hours. You can run a stove off of this thing or like an oven. So this is not like a little power pack that you just charge your phone with. This will run an RV. You know, this thing is huge and you can expand it. So make sure you check this out. I think I've got coupons, like I said, for both. They'll be in the video description. You'll get it, if you do get this, you can actually hook it up to their solar panels too. I think I've got some solar panels with my little 600 and they send the cords for the solar panels. They got your DC hookup. One thing they sent that I'm definitely gonna use that I didn't even know it came with was they're already prepared for you to take this out. It comes with a waterproof cover that slips over it. And I didn't know this, like I, I found this in the thing when I opened it up this week and you can still get to all your controls, but since I'm gonna have this outside of my truck and outside of the tent, I think it's pretty cool for me to be able to plug my stuff up, you know, whatever I got plugged in there and zip this thing mostly shut. And you can also get through to the top if you wanna utilize that wireless charging. So that's pretty cool and it's gonna keep it from, you know, if it starts raining in the middle of the night, it'll keep it from getting too soaking wet. I think that's pretty, I love the cover. I think the cover was a really definite upgrade for this thing. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to pop up in this rooftop tent today and we're gonna hook this heater up, turn the heater on. I've kind of tested it. I filled it up with some diesel uh, fuel. It's got like a six liter tank on the inside of here. And I was gonna build one of these with y'all and 
you know how people, they're actually using these little Apache cases like that one, but the smaller version, and they're buying these Chinese diesel heaters, which that's all that's in this thing is one of those diesel heaters, and they're putting them in there, and then you build all these ports, and by the time you're done, you've got you know three or $400 in a little heater. Well, this thing right here, I think this is under 200 bucks, and it's already built. It's all built in. It's got a key fob, so I'm gonna actually be able to control it from my tent, and if I don't wanna use the key fob, it's got a Bluetooth app that you can control everything, the temperature, how long it runs, you know, time limits and stuff like that. It's got an LCD touchscreen remote right here for it. So it's pretty neat. We're gonna run this thing today. Here's where you fill it up. I've got it almost still full. This thing should run a full weekend just off of one tank of fuel too, from what I read on the reviews and stuff on it. So this should be already dropped. I know it's on their website already. I'll have that link below but it's also supposed to be dropping this month, I think, on Amazon. So if they've got an Amazon link, I'll also have it below too. So that's pretty cool. I used the other one last year, the red one. If y'all follow me, you know, I put it on the trailer build, that uh, adventure trailer build we did, and it did great, but it wasn't compact like this. You know, it's actually right here. It's that old big red one I had. It was, it really did good heating up that tent last year, but. This one being compact and kind of pourable, I really like the design. So I'm glad that we got that thing. We're gonna be able to set this on the Diamondback, that on the Diamondback, plug everything up and sleep comfortably. Because you know, that trip I just went on to Tennessee a couple of weeks ago, it, it wasn't even cold yet here in Alabama, but it was cold up there at night. So I think, uh, I don't like sleeping in the cold. And it got down, I think, in the low 40s. Here lately, we've already had frost, so it's in the 30s and 20s now. So I definitely want this thing to be heated up. So let's pop it open, run this heater in here, see how loud it is. From the reviews and stuff, once it gets going, you know, at first you can hear the click, 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 the uh, fuel pump. But from what I've read, this thing, once it gets going and heated up, you can't even hear it. Like people are running this thing. Some people are running this inside their RV to heat up their whole RV. You just have to make sure you run your exhaust tube out somewhere like that. So let's pop this thing open. And if you guys are new to the channel, this is the Nature Nest. I've actually done a recent video on this thing where we unboxed it, did a full review. I actually found this tent on Amazon and it's pretty sick, but I will go ahead and say for those of you who follow the channel, I've got another tent here in the shop and I've got a couple more on the way where I've, I'm gonna be doing some more reviews for these tents. Now they're all different brands from different companies and some comparison videos. So I've got a comparison video of a tent that side by side, it looks a lot like this one, but I think the inside, once it opens up, it's got a lot more features than this one does. And I think a lot of you guys are gonna like it as well. So y'all stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed for that video. Now let's open this thing up. And I'm not gonna be climbing in and out of this thing on this video, but I did wanna bring it in here, just open it up, cause I wanna figure out how exactly I'm gonna enter the tent with this tube stuff I got. So is the camera far enough back for y'all to see that? And also, what do y'all think about this, uh, this gimbal? Look at this. I'm, I'm testing out a new, uh, and I'll share it with you guys in the video description. I'll probably go over this gimbal in an upcoming video. I'm waiting on a new tripod for it to come in, but this, uh, this gimbal actually sets up with my regular camera and it kind of follows me around the shop. And if I want to stop it, I should be able to do that. And now I can kind of freely walk around, but let me make sure you can see the whole tent. Now I should be able to walk back over here, make it the old Gamecock symbol. And it picks me right back up. It's pretty neat, ain't it? It's got like this AI tracking thing on it. If you're interested in this, uh, gimbal set up for a camera. And what's cool about it is you can run cell phone cameras. I mean, you could put your phone on it, GoPros. I've got a Sony ZV-1 on it right now and it's doing really good. But let me grab these awning posts and pop these out. Also, did you guys see how fast this tent just opened up? I mention that every time. If uh, you're new to the rooftop tent world and you're wanting to get into, oh, look, it blocked me. So I got to come back over here and let it pick, there we go, pick me back up. I got to get used to this thing. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on the, the screen over there now to make sure that it doesn't lose me. But anyway, if you're uh, just getting into the rooftop game, make sure you look into the clamshell stuff. These clamshell tents are, are the way to go. I've been through several tents and 
The, the fabric top ones, they're just, they take too long to set up. They take too long to put down. This one is set up. I mean, it is completely set up in the garage right now. And that's all we had to do. When it's on top of the truck, it takes the same amount of time. Two latches, push up, it's done. You're, you're ready to crawl in there and go to sleep if you wanted to. But let's start with, uh, I'm gonna bring the pecker on over here. We're just gonna set it up, kind of mock it up like it's on the back of my truck and turn this thing on. I've got a thermometer, or I say a thermometer, a temperature gauge right here. It's, I'm not used to this camera following me around, but I got a little temperature gauge. Now you got to see how dirty my, my workbench is over there. So it's 68 degrees in here right now. Once we get the heater turned on and pumping out some heat, I'm gonna stick the tube in there. We'll zip it up and see how quickly it drops the, the temperature in there. Let me grab the old peck run here. And the, the H calorie, I think that's what it's called. It's H calorie uh, heater. It can run off DC and AC. It comes with both cables. So you can actually plug this thing into a regular battery if you wanted to, or you can plug it into a wall outlet. We're gonna use the AC port to plug it into that Pecron 2000. And the port's on the other side, ain't it? Of course. Yep. It's not gonna go over here. I'll get you guys a close up on this setup in just a minute too. Once we get everything rocking and rolling here. So I'm gonna plug it in here, turn the AC on. We should have power to that now. Uh, this thing also comes with an exhaust pipe with a muffler on it. I don't, I might slide it on just for now, but I'm not gonna run this thing too long. We just wanna run it long enough for it to warm up and possibly get the tent going. Let me pull it back away here a little bit. I mean, get the tent going. I mean, get the uh, tent warmed up. So you can actually turn this however you want it. I'm just gonna slip it on there like that for now. Now, we've got, where'd that go? Now I've got two different sizes of this tube from that heater build we did last year on the trailer. I think what this takes is three inches. So I've got a three inch and a four inch. The three inch is what fits it really good, but my four inch is the better stuff. This is the, the stuff that's insulated. I got this off Amazon and I'll link all this stuff below if, uh, if you're putting together something like this for your tent or your camper. But I think I'm gonna be able to get away with just like sticking this in here. You know, something like that, zipping the screen down around it and then hooking it up right there, right? But right now I'm gonna have to do this. Something like that. And it comes with the hose clamps and everything, but I didn't wanna clamp everything up for this video because I wanna be able to move it around and see how, how well it does. Kind of set it up like it and see how it does. We'll turn it on. Did you hear what it says? It said start heating. Let me show you guys the display. Let me stop it. Stop. All right, so you can hear it. It's starting to turn on right now. Here's the little LCD screen I just showed you guys. It says fully colored. And it tells you the stages where it's at and it's, it, you can actually turn it up and turn it down by pushing these buttons or the Bluetooth app or the key fob that I showed you right here. So you got on the key fob, you got an on and off, up and down. But I think it's really cool that this thing was built into kind of a, kind of like a little tool chest. And you can hear it clicking. Let me get quiet for a minute so you can hear it. That is the fuel pump. Now, once this thing gets to going, it'll get quiet. 
Actually, it got quiet as soon as I opened up the lid there, but here's the inside of it. You got the heater on one side, you got your fuel tank on the other side. And it sounds like it's already fired up. So this is, like I said, it's diesel, so it's got a glow plug. And once the glow plug gets hot enough, it'll start pumping out heat. Make sure all this is set up where it's not gonna fall out. If we come in here, oh yeah, it's already pumping heat out right there. Let me get some light in there for you guys. So that's not gonna be too bad and I can, and I can either put it over here or since our head's gonna be up here, we'll probably stick the inlet back there on the back side of the tent. So I'm gonna have this on the diamond back and then the, we'll be able to run the duct up to probably this corner over here. Pecron's pushing it just fine. There's an up close picture of that Pecron 2000, E2000 LFP. This thing also has the uh, BMS system on it, the ba uh, battery management system, I believe is what it's called. So it's got its built-in protection so you can't like short circuit it or, or tear up anything. If you plug into something, it's got fuses that will trip that you can untrip to, to fix it if you accidentally mess something up on it. Plug something in where it shouldn't be plugged in, you know, something like that. Oh, wow. All right, so I'm gonna test this out. So let's try it. So it's 47% humidity in my shop right now, and it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how warm this is coming out of here. I'm not sure where I should set this actually. I'll just set it like that for now. I don't even really want to shut it. Let's check the exhaust. So the exhaust is right here. The exhaust is, it puts out some hot air. Here's your intake. So you don't have to put anything on the intake side there. There's the kind of the specs on it for you guys that might be interested in that. See, it's not too loud. I can still hear the clicking, but it's gotten a lot quieter. This thing's gonna be sick. Oh wow, that is really hot air pumping out of there. So now what I gotta do is I've gotta get all of this loaded up onto the truck because we are gonna be going camping. We, I still got a couple of days, but I wanna go ahead and get the tent back on there, get everything mounted up. I am gonna be testing this out so because it's gonna be cold. It's gonna get down in the 20s again. So I'm gonna be running the Pecoron, like I said, the E2000. Check them out. All this stuff's gonna be linked in the video description below. Check out the diesel heater, the H calorie system. It is really nice. Everybody, like I mentioned earlier, has been building those using those Chinese heaters out of those Apache boxes. And that was my plan until I ran across this. These guys did a really good job of, of building one that's easy to carry, it stows good, the fuel tank is actually inside the box with it. I think that is a really good design for those of you that are getting into this rooftop tent camping during the winter. Even a regular tent or an RV, this thing will put out some heat and it should run a very long time, it's very well made. So I do like that a lot. We're gonna be pairing it, like I said, with that E2000 uh, Pecron. That thing's a beast, I can't wait to use it this year. It, I also like how all of this is really compact, so I'm gonna be able to still run the tight, lightweight, compact system that I got this winter without having to carry a, a whole bunch of extra stuff to keep me warm. Because one of the heaters that I've used recently, I forgot to mention, was this Buddy Heater, which the Buddy Heater does really good but it's also very, it's not safe to use inside of a rooftop tent like this because you can kick it over. And if you kick it over, I know it's got safety switches and stuff like that, but it's still, to me, that's not a safe way to go. These diesel heaters, these are safe, especially if you're gonna do like I'm doing, I'm gonna run the heater outside of the tent. We're gonna duct up the, the heat into the tent. So that's gonna work out good. But anyway, I've gotta get all of this set up Stay tuned for that future content. I will be testing this out. You're gonna see a lot more of this stuff on the channel. Maybe the next video will be in that tent that's actually behind y'all in the box. I don't know, I've got that one scheduled to come up very soon, the review of that tent. And then we're gonna do a comparison video with this versus that when you guys get to see the actual difference. I think that'll be really cool. But yeah, I'm gonna pack everything up, head out. You guys that are still with me, the kayak trailer builds. 
for those of you that you know been with me for a long time, you know that's kind of my passion. I love building those. I've got some stuff on the way now that I'm very excited. So we're not just gonna keep doing this tent stuff forever. Uh, I've, I ordered, I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all, I ordered the Yakima top water box. I, it was very expensive. I know they're, they're extremely high, but there's really not another one on the market that compares to it. So I paid the money, I ordered the top water box. So now we are fixing to do a top tier system on my solo single kayak trailer. We're gonna weld up some brackets. We're gonna put some lights on it. We're gonna install a way to fold the top water box sideways. That is gonna be a full build series. I think it's gonna be really cool to do very soon. So y'all stay tuned for that video. I'm gonna do that build probably this winter. I'm waiting on the, the box should be here in the next couple of days and I just gotta go pick up the steel and I'm gonna get to work. I really wanna get this trailer built out and ready for this, this fall. Well, it's actually fall now. This winter fishing and then spring fishing, I wanna have this thing ready to go. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I upload every Monday at six o'clock and I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.